Hey you Cubase users, it's Milan here and today I'm going to show you 5 amazing tricks in Cubase MIDI Editor that you maybe didn't know even exist but can make your life way more easier. We're going to use this track to demonstrate the stuff I'm talking about. I'm going to show you one special trick, it's my personal trick, on how to duplicate things in Cubase MIDI Editor in a special way to keep the original feel and I'm also going to show you how to play extremely fast parts without being a keyboard player and being a virtuoso. So let's jump into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is a tool called Step Input. Now, I created a, this kind of a cinematic, ostinato, you know, repetitive track here uh, that I played you in the intro. And now I'm going to show you how can you create some fast parts, you know, such as ostinato things, uh, or, you know, any kind of fast parts and passages you have in your um, arrangements or compositions uh, that you can easily do because I'm not an experienced key, uh, keyboard player and I can't really play piano parts very fast. So I really use this tool a lot to help me. And let me just solo the track here. It's a um, piano track and let's play it. Okay, and I have one similar track like that right here down in my strings. Uh, I think it's one of these. Yeah. Right. The same, it plays the same thing. Okay, so how do we create this, you know, if we can't play it in a piano? So it's something like this. It's basically an E minor chord, and then we have A major, E minor, C minor again. And to do that, let's open the MIDI editor. And let's just make it full size. Okay, and now I need to input a part something like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Right? This talks a lot about my piano skills. <laughs> but anyway, so I just wanted to play the fast, the, you know, I can't really play it that way, that fast, like it played in the composition. So I'm just going to use step input, which is a tool right here. So let's enable it. And this tool allows me to input certain notes in specified quantized values um, and let's say if I click somewhere on the on the grid you see this blue line this is just to set where do you start so let's just you know start it here where this part starts and I'm going to select the quantized value a triplets because I have that one two three one two three feel and the next thing I need to do is just to input the notes and they will be inserted for these quantized value. Okay, so if I now just insert the notes, let me just play it, I can just play it separately without thinking about tempo and time, and it will just place it exactly on the tempo for the quantized value I just, I've chosen here. So let's play my ostinato notes. Right, and let's go back, and if I play it, I'm just soloing this track, so let's just solo it and let's play it. Right? It just repeats over and over and over. And now I could just play it over and over and over again. But uh, actually I can just duplicate these things. It's way more easier than just, you know, playing it again. But again, if you want, you can just play it over and over. And over. But I'm going to show you a cool, very cool duplicate thing, which is the next. Cool. Okay, so the trick number two is a thing I like using when I'm duplicating things in the MIDI editor. Now, if you just select all of these notes, I'm just going to turn off the step editor. If you just select all of these notes, and if I just press uh, Control or Command on Mac plus D, look what happens. I, get, I duplicate all of these notes. Let's zoom in a little bit here. I'm just pressing letter H. Uh, and look what happens here. Now, I want this new ostinato part to start at the beginning of the next quarter note right here in this white line. But because when you duplicate things inside the MIDI editor, um, this note continues where the last one was. So I have this B4 note, it ended right here. And I want it to last this long, right? I don't want it to last till the end of this note. But I want this E note to start on, the, on this line here. So to do that, there's one very cool trick. I just add something called a ghost note. So let's choose the draw tool. And just draw a note that you don't need in this ostinato. Maybe some, you know, up higher. So it's visible. And I just draw in that note. 
then I select my mute tool and then I mute the note. Now that, you know, so this note is as long as the entire phrase lasts. So if I just select all of these notes and then I press control plus D or duplicate, look, I have the exact set of notes again here repeating at the exact same positions and starting at this line. So I can just press, you know, how many times I want it. If I just, you know, select it one more time, let's select all of this and I just press, you know, you know as many times as I want. And I quickly get this part repeating. If I play it, right, it goes on and on and on. It's a very convenient trick to use. Now, also there's one more trick I can just, let me just undo all of this stuff. Okay. Uh, there's also one cool trick. If you know, for example, exactly, I want to repeat this 10 times. So here's, you know, the first one. I can just press control or command on Mac plus K. And then this repeat events option appears. And then I can say, okay, repeat this for nine more times. So where it says count, type in nine, go, okay, bam. And just like that, I have 10 of these repeating again and again and again. Now that we have our ostinato playing and we have that repetitive thing and we've seen the step input and stuff, now let me show you some cool, you know, MIDI tweaking, editing, moving notes, things that can be very, very useful and the things that you should know. So the first one would be to move any of these notes. Let's say you want to change the pitch of this note. You can just use your arrow keys up and down. And just like that, change the note or we can select a section of notes like these here and I can just hold shift and press up and move the entire section for an octave up or just press shift and go down and down again and then test it. Okay, maybe I want it to go like this. So let's say I select this one and I move this one for an octave up and let's play it now. Right, just like that. It plays fast with a step input and I've just switched it to an octave and it does the magic. Now, the next thing I want to show you here is if you, let's say you want to move something for a quantized value. There's a very cool trick that you can move a note for a specified quantized value to the left, to the left or to the right. So let's go to this quantized value here and let's select, for example, one quarter note. And if I select this note and then I called control or command on Mac plus left or right arrow key, I will use the right one. Look what happens. I move the note for this value, one quarter. If I press one more time, I move it for two quarter notes. And just like that, you can easily move something for a quantized value, which is quite convenient. The next trick I'm going to show you has to do something uh, with the grid relative option. Now, when you play, you know, sometimes you want to keep that humane feel. You don't want everything perfectly quantized and on the grid, but maybe you want to move certain notes, but keep the original feel and maybe slight offset of the grid. So let me show you what I mean here by an example. Let's say I want this B note to be a little bit off this grid line here. I'm just going to press letter J to turn off snap and then just, you know, freely move the note a little bit here. And let's say I wanted to play it a little bit off. Okay, and then I decide, well, maybe I want to copy this note or move it. Maybe I don't want it here. Maybe I wanted to play it right here on the, you know, next quarter note or whatever. Uh, if I just drag it and have my snap option on, and I drag it here. Look what happens. Now, um, Cubase snaps it exactly to the grid line. But I say, no, let's go back. Let's undo this. I want to keep this feel here. See, a little offset, but I want this note to be right here on this line. So we go here next to the snap option where it says grid. And then we click on grid relative. Now everything will move relatively to the grid. So it will move it for the quantized value, but will keep that original distance. If So if I select this note and I have my snap on, I drag the note, see, right? It keeps that original distance. So it's grid relative, it's relative to the grid. An awesome option when let's say you have an, an awesome bass line that has a certain groove and um, you know, it's dancing with the, with the drums, but you don't want to quantize it, quantize it perfectly because you want a little bit of that offset. And then you want to move these parts. You can just, you know, select grid relative and then move it relatively to the grid 
with keeping that original feel. This next uh, media editor option is completely amazing and it's here since Cubase 11, I think, and it's called Global Tracks. Now, what this does basically allows you to see these uh, info tracks such as arranger tracks or chord tracks, marker tracks in your MIDI editor. And to en enable these, so for example, when I'm editing, I just like to know like what chord is here because sometimes I forget and I'm adding some counter melodies or, you know, some other lines and I just don't want to go back, but I want to see it in the MIDI editor. And when this thing showed up, I was completely you know, amazed because I was waiting for this thing a long time ago. So if you have Cubase 11 or 12, you can use this option. So let's just double this, uh, double click on this string part and enlarge it. And now if I go to the left, let's turn on the left zone. You have this option, global tracks. Now we can select any of these tracks. Uh, so I'm going to turn on core track. And just like that, I can see what chords are being played inside the MIDI editor. Uh, or I can add markers or arrangers. Now, I only have one arranger um, section here, so I didn't add because I've created this track just specifically for this lesson. But anyway, uh, quite convenient thing, you know, when adding some extra harmony layers, good to know what chord is playing here. You don't want to sound weird or, you know, to add too much disharmony or whatever it is. Uh, I hope you like these tricks. Please write down in the comment section, do you use any of these tricks or what are your favorite things to do in, inside the media editor? Also, please uh, help me grow and subscribe and like this video so I can reach more people and grow my channel better. That helps tremendously. And also, if you completely want to master Cubase, check out the description below. Um, you can check out my complete Cubase mastery course, which is a 12 hour course that will help you to completely get full control over the program. And this is it for today's video. See you in the next one.